Yo, what's up, my mole? It's Sharp here, bringing you guys another video, and today, bringing you guys another Sharp and Destroy episode, and the last video I posted of this series is the very first one, I was just kind of, you know, seeing what you guys wanted to see, and it was on Public Match s &D. it was actually on one of the new maps, uh, and a lot of you guys said that you wanted to see pubs, a lot of you guys said you wanted to see league play, and a lot of you guys just said, no, stick to competitive, uh, so, basically what I'm going to do here, I'm going to fast forward through all the deaths that I have, but, um, I'm, I'm, I think I'm gonna just do a mixture of all of it, and then just have that be have that be the whole series. Uh, you know, I, one episode will be pub match for the pub match players. One, one episode will be competitive, and then I'll throw some league play in there. Uh, kind of a mixture of both league play being a public competitive match. <laughs> but I, I want to kind of have a I want to kind of have a good mixture, so you know, everyone on my channel is getting getting a good. What, what they want to see, uh, because I know there are some people out there that do want to see public match videos, uh, and then there's some people who just don't even care, they just say, you know, post post whatever you want to post, but this, this is what I'm going to do, and, and I might transition this series over to the Team Caliber channel, I, I'm not sure, I might, I might do that, but uh, as for now, it's going to be on my channel, uh, and, and what I mean by that is there's a Team Caliber team channel, if you guys don't know. Uh, my 1v1 series actually started on the on the Envy, Envy team channel. That's why if you guys go back to my videos, it only goes back to like 30 or something, 30 or 40 on, on my channel. Uh, that's because the other episodes are over on the Team Envy channel because that's where I started doing my 1v1s at. <clears throat> but anyway... Uh, let's get into this SD. Off the start, I usually like to take control B really, you know, really fast, pushing up, getting aggressive. Uh, you saw the first round, it didn't work, realized it killed me. Uh, this time I didn't jump up all the way to the top, uh, I guess, chimney little thing on top of yellow. Uh, I actually stayed behind this head glitch right here. Uh, and, and this way, what, what I normally do, what me and Theory normally do, is I have Theory watch one of my sides and then, you know, I'll push up to that. And then I, I just, I like to play aggressive at B. I used to play slow. If you guys ever watched any of my old videos or watched. Uh, anything from pro scrims. I played really I used to play really slow on uh, Meltdown s and I'd sit on on the yellow with an M8 <clears throat> and pretty much give up all of B control uh, and, and you know, I've kind of learned that that's not what you want to do. You don't want to you know give the whole team control to B, but uh, we're we're one two right now and I died so I'm nowhere near streaks, but uh, usually usually on on this map everyone likes to favor B side and that's the way to go uh, but I like to kind of go A, and our, our team likes to push A, uh, especially with packs. The rules are going to be that shotguns allowed. Nezzo loves using a shotgun going A. So off the start here, I push up top middle. Now th they snipe me. I get sniped at, but I don't get called out. Uh, so I, I run over here, kill Heist in his back because the sniper didn't call me out, and then I go and kill the guy sniping in Stainville uh, and pick up an easy two piece. Now that's kind of a bad play on their part. I don't know. I hope I think he was sniping at me and he missed, but I'm not completely sure. But I get killed from the Gundar spot, and then they take him out so fast forward fast forward and then play so yeah the, the guy sniping me i don't know if he saw me and if i was the one he was sniping at or what but if he was he didn't call me out i was able to run in there behind heist and kill him uh either way you know we're coming in from both sides so you know whoever was coming in from the from our side a would have been able to kill heist anyway uh and right there it was kind of an example of me getting a little too aggressive on b uh and then we gave up control of it and I got, I got killed, and then they ended up playing the bomb and winning the round. Uh, so I, I probably shouldn't have been that aggressive on B, but I was. And that would that, 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 that's just what happened. We didn't pick up the bomber here. had to send someone back. I told them that I was actually rushing middle generator. Uh, and I think we actually had me and Nezzo both rushing middle generator. Um, so we had two people in the middle generator, which is not is not a bad idea because you can help bait and switch and and push push people, but you don't want to have two people just sitting there. Uh, Nezlo pushes down the B. I see this guy top middle, so I'm just gonna rush him top middle uh, and pick up the kill on him. Almost actually gets almost actually get killed. Uh, and the reason why I rushed him is just because I knew where he was. Uh, he had just killed Gunjar. He wasn't gonna expect anyone to come rushing from right there. As you saw, he you know he tried rotating over to B. Uh, it's just best to just get that kill out of the way after he, right after he killed Gunjar. You know trade. Actually, who did he kill? No, they killed Theory, not Gunjar. But uh, get that trade down, and then <clears throat> you know just move on from that. So right now it is a one-on-three situation. Uh, my job right now is basically to make sure he doesn't ninja defuse the bomb and watch top middle. So I'm just gonna keep eyes on bomb, make sure no one sneaks by and gets on it. Uh, because it's a one v three, what is he really gonna do? It's not like he's gonna be able to kill us all and then defuse the bomb. Uh, but he does kill Nezlo. 
And so I decided to rotate all the way around the, through their spawn because I knew he didn't have time to go middle. Uh, so he had to push up bomb bomb. So this way I could come behind him. You see him behind him. Goonjar challenges uh, in a real situation. Actually, I guess the time was kind of, you know, already run down. But um, Goonjar probably wouldn't have wanted to challenge that because I, I did tell him that I was behind him and I would have had the kill. It would have been a free kill for me. But uh, it's a scrim, so it doesn't really matter. Goonjar challenged and picked up the kill. Uh, even if Gunjar would have died, there's no way Samuel would have turned and then killed me. There was, there was only like 11 seconds left, so um, all I had to do, if he killed Gunjar, was stay alive. So off this, I'm not going to go up the middle. I'm actually going to push up this left side B. Uh, and it, you see I'm using a submachine gun, and I used hardwired. So you saw that EMP grenade land right there in front of me. I used hardwired. Uh, I, should, I should probably use cold-blooded. Um, just for the fact that people do use MMS, uh, and if they see me sitting right here, then that's going to be a free kill for them probably. Um, but I, I do use hardwired on some of my rush classes just because if they throw EMP, if people throw EMPs one to get ready to stop your mini map, and two to slow you down, and three to see where you are pretty much. So if you get hit with an EMP, you're just going to be done. So I killed Stainville. I'm, I'm rotating back because I killed Stainville. They called out people going B. Uh, there was no reason for me to just keep pushing through their spawn like that. Uh, they, because, you know, they, they would have had someone looking right there for me after I killed Stainville. Um, actually, actually, I think I remember this. They called out people mid-map. So I rotate around trying to look mid-map. Pick up Stainville's assault rifle, and I'm going to go all the way through their spawn. You know, there, there's 30 seconds left on the clock. There's no reason for any of them to still be, you know, hanging out in their spawn. Uh, and at this point, we, we think they're going B. Uh, or, I mean, we think we're going. they're going A. So I'm trying to sneak in A. I think, who's left with me? Theory, I believe. Yeah, Theory starts to rotate over to A. I don't see him A, but they get a plant down B. Uh, that was just kind of unfortunate. Um, usually in a, in a, like a two-on-two -two situation, you want to stay together. But I guess, you know, we could have had Theory try to get eyes on B. And then while I, I had a good vantage point on A. But we don't. Theory picks up the kill and realizes a one on two situation. I tell him to wait for me. He pushes down middle. I come up the right side right here. Uh, and, and we, we kind of figured he was going to be in the back of our spawn. And we didn't see him back there. So I was like, yeah, he probably lapped. I catch him right there in the corner of my eye. He jumps out. I kind of warrior him. Yes, I do. I live in Kentucky and I do get I do get some bullshit kills online. Everyone gets them. But uh, that was, to me, was probably a bullshit kill. Probably shouldn't have gotten that. Uh, but I, th I feel like Theory would have picked him up anyway. So I get an RC car. It is 4-3. I am what nine and five. I can't really see that because I'm like lean. I'm leaning back, chilling right now, doing this commentary. But four three, we get the RC car. Now a lot of people don't agree with the RC car just for the fact that, and uh, my dog's barking. I hope you guys can't hear that. But a lot of people don't agree with the RC car just for the fact that it kind of um, leaves you leaves you not playing in the game and you don't get your map control where you need it. But I actually like the RC car, especially for something like defense. Because on defense, when I go B, I can either play fast B or I can play slow B. And if I call an RC car, I can tell my team where they're going. I can say, oh, they're going A, oh, they're going B. Uh, that, that's kind of a way for me to, you know, scope out the map and see where, where the players are going uh, other than, you know, just randomly going in. So if I see all of them B side, then I can tell the A guys, you know, you guys can push up. I saw three guys B. Or, or if I see no one B side, Theory can rotate back and go help them at A. And then when I come out, or, or when I come out of the RC car, I can go A. But you see we push in A right here, and I pick up this kill on Methods, uh, and that puts us up 5-3. But basically when you're going A, you want to make sure you're, you're stacking the inside of the bomb. Uh, if you get every single person on your team inside the bomb site and you're just watching doors, uh, especially on land, since the fact that there's not really as much bullshit with the, with the camera glitch and you know connection where people can jump through doors and kill you without you even seeing them on your screen... Uh, then, then you're gonna do a good job of you know controlling A because you're just watching every doorway. So I call the RC car in right here, you know, on defense. I like to use it on defense. I don't like to use it on offense. Uh, and I get stunned with it, and then I push up right here. So I see them going B. I see this guy in the back of B, but I only see one person. I only call out, you know, there's one person there, and, and the other guys are going A. So off the off the break, I guess for me off the break because I just came out of the RC car. I push over to A side to kind of help watch this. Uh, you see my teammate coming behind me, um, trying to watch this side. And then ne I tell Nezla I have streaks. So I tell Nezla to bait for me. And, and what that means is I send him in, send him in first. And then so he goes in first. He gets killed. That got the ladder. Quit watching the ladder and tried to help his teammate over there to watch uh, the stairs. So right now it is a one on one. on one. And actually I want to watch this because my team, uh, my team was yelling at me saying I saw him on my screen. And I want to kind of explain the reason why I didn't see him. So you guys saw him run right there. All right, let's rewind this. You'll see him run across my screen and looking like a damn raptor, like in the pillars. Hold on, I didn't go far back enough. All right, so we'll go right here. Let's play it slow motion. 
Then he gets killed. I guess he runs through mid map. I don't know where he goes after he kills uh, Theory. But apparently, I'm sitting here watching with my eyes this door. So on my screen right now, you know, you can put your you can. A lot of times, people like to put their gun right in the middle of their screen so they can you know watch it better with their peripherals. But I was focusing my eyes on that bottom door, so I wasn't really watching the left side of my screen. So I put it in slow motion. I kind of back up, and they I guess they saw him come into the left right there, and they see him run run through the pillar right there, through the left. And then my whole team just starts screaming. Blah, 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 blah. Everyone on my team is screaming. Uh, kind of bad communication on our part because I didn't know where the hell he went or what the hell they were talking about. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't tell me where he was. They just kept, like, it sounded like a bunch of turkeys gobbling. Uh, so I couldn't I couldn't really focus on you know, where he was and what was going on. Uh, and I do get taken out right there, and he clutches the 1v2. So kind of unfortunate, but uh, I recommend when, when you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation and your teammates are dead watching you, that you tell them that there needs to be one person on your team who, who is helping you call out, not everyone on your team, uh, because a lot of times people like to freak out and, and sit there and do that. But I did pick up streaks, so I have a lightning and a hellstorm, and we're going to be, and I'm going to probably, I think I use it this round, uh, my lightning and my, or I think I use my lightning. I don't know if I use the hellstorm, but, you know, I use the lightning, so we can push up B, clear out B. There was actually no one B. I called three people out in A. I said they're all three in A. One guy was mid map. So we put we push up immediately on B, plant the bomb, and I'm just gonna watch mid map right here because uh, I know I knew they were all in there. There's no reason for me to watch B. Realize I actually had a hellstorm. He calls in the hellstorm, kills Nezlo. So now it is a two on four. Goonjar gets a kill. It's a three on two. Now it's a two on two. And the bomb's planted. I still have a hellstorm, so I decided to call on this hellstorm. Now, I probably should have made it go slow, but I wanted to get a kill if they were at B. Uh, so I did get that guy. I picked him up. Now it's a one on two, and I know where the last guy was. He's mid map. And now we're just going to rotate back into B. Take control of B. 15 seconds left. Two on one with 15 seconds. Uh, Gunjar picks up the kill on realizing mid map, and we win the map 6 4. So I ended that game 14 and 6. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Sharp and Destroy. If you guys did, be sure to click the like button. Let me know. Uh, and, and if you guys have any comments to like concerns or anything to leave me comments and concerns, what am I like a damn teacher? Holy shit! But uh, if you guys have any like suggestions of what what you guys want to see, uh, always leave them down in the comments. Or if you just want to talk to me, and most of the time, as long as it's not like some stupid ass response, I'll I'll respond to it. Um, as far as like if someone's like, oh, Sharp, you stupid bullcut idiot. I'll, I'll respond. I'll probably respond to that and be like, what the hell's wrong with you? But um, as always, it's your boy Sharp. If you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe. I'm out. Peace.